Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Sunva and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at Apiary. This is a new game designed by Connie Vogelman published by Stonemaier Games. It plays from 1 to 5 players in 60 to 90 minutes. So Apiary is a game all about space bees. That's pretty cool actually. Yes, yeah. it's kind of in the future and it's all about the, the humans are gone mm -hmm. and the, the, the humans bees, are dead. The humans are dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and these bees are now in space. But for some reason, yeah. there is a theme here in the far distant futures. Human humans no longer inhabit Earth. The cause of their disappearance or perhaps their demise is unknown, but their absence left a void ready to be filled by another sentient species. So it's not actually bees, it's something called mellifera. Okay. That is the thing. And before we talk about okay. anything else, uh, this is a, a review copy of the game sent to us by the publisher, just so you know that before we go into the meat and potatoes, the bread and butter, cool. the peanut butter and jam of this review. Could you please tell us a little bit about the bread and potatoes? Yes, I never thought you were going to ask, but here it is. Apiary is a bee placement game, also known as a worker placement game, where you are going to place workers on different spots on the board. The workers have levels, so they're going to start on probably level 1 or level 2, and then whenever you kind of reset them, they're going to uh, bump up to a new level, and when they are level 4, they're going to be more powerful, so when you do like a level 4 action, it's going to be more powerful, and then they have to hibernate because they're tired, or they're going to die. Like, there's many games about death, I feel like, where they don't talk about the death part. Yeah, but here they're hibernating. Yes. That is like, yeah, but do like bees... bears in the winter. Yes, but do, like, normal <laughs> they bees... They don't die, or well, some, <laughs> some probably do. But... I don't think the normal bees hibernate and then survive, because bees don't live for a long time. So if maybe it's done for to be more family-friendly, welcome. <laughs> things die. Okay, we are going to talk about more about the game. The things you're doing in this game is that you are going to have a little board like this with your little space base on it. You're going to have a faction that you're going to start with here and you want to build different tiles out here. You're going to build different kind of tiles. There's going to be tiles with special abilities, there are going to be tiles with uh, instant abilities, there are going to be tiles which has income and also going to have more spaces for you to have uh, resources on them, like store resources, because you're starting with some spaces like that. And then you're going to have to get resources. You can explore planets to find resources and some special abilities. And you are basically doing these things. So, and some of them are like heavy final scoring, um, final scoring things. Mm -hmm. The game is kind of like many other games in this category of you are trying to get resources and then trying to convert those resources into victory points yeah. in different kind of ways. So if that's a fun way of doing it or not, we're going to talk about. Uh, but basically that's what you're doing. You're placing the workers, doing the actions. Uh, we're going to talk more about like this. There's a little bit of a twist again on the worker placement category or the worker placement mechanism, but we're going to get into that soon. Before we talk about that, I hope that makes some sense. Other people made like rules stuff. We don't do that, but we hopefully do rambling stuff. it's enough for you to understand how anything of this review makes sense. Let's talk about other things. We have eyes. We you have eyes. The game. You are a super person, eyes. Let's yes. talk about the game. Thank looks. you. Um, the game has good quality components, as we always expect from the Stormnire games. And it has really nice space artwork. I love a game with a theme that I makes love a game. me... <laughs> yeah, 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 that's full stop right there. You don't need anything else. But I especially love a theme in a game which makes me want to like second guess it. Like, it's about bees in space. I'm just like, what? Bees in space? And yeah, it is. And I think that it, it's it's cool theme and it's good quality components and it looks good as well. I think it's kind of, it's, it's weird because uh, nature has gotten to be like one of the biggest themes lately. Mm -hmm. Like nature themed games are big. And then they're thinking, oh, nature isn't good enough. We need to have sci-fi nature. <laughs> nature. They put it together and people will be like, it's space and it's nature. It's going to be amazing. But I think like the theme in this game, like, and in addition to it, it's a Stonemire release, yes. is what are like getting this game attention because it's a unique game. And it's, you, like it's a showstopper. Yeah, and it's kind of weird because it's very easy. It's like, okay, bees, not so cool, but bees in space. Yeah, it's super cool. So whatever you do, like zombies, that's so overdone, but zombies in space, people are going to be like, what? Yeah. That's something completely new to me. But yeah, that, I, I think the artwork is fantastic. Yeah. 
really, really great. Love that. I, I, I know I'm not an expert on ice, but I also enjoy all the things I see with my eyes in this game. Mm -hmm. The game also has... A rule book! Yes, it does. And it looks like this. It has the new standard uh, paper from... Uh, it can almost like what are you, what are you laughing I'm about? Sorry. It has a standard paper. I don't want to buy the game if the game is not with a rule book with the old paper. Old kind of I paper. But, kind of but paper. it's gonna be weird, like because Tom Mario started with these kind of very nice uh, rule books in yeah. wingspan, I think. It's gonna be hard for him to go back from that. The rule book is about the game and it's also sixteen pages long. Did you get my joke? Yes. I was gonna yeah, say like about sixteen pages funny. and I was like, yeah, it's about the it. game. Jokes are even better when you explain them afterwards. People are going to be like, oh, that's why I didn't laugh. It's 16 pages. And most of it is actually the rules and setup. That being said, it's a small rule book and it also has quite a few pictures in it. So because it's not a very complicated game, it's a medium game. Spoiler alert for another section later on. <laughs> it's a medium, medium game, so it's not that much going on. It also has an appendix, which is really nice. It has basically every single card, every single thing in it. And it doesn't have that kind of thing where half of them you just had to guess. I love that they're explaining just everything. Yeah, because somebody's yeah. gonna... This is like a pet peeve of mine in games where you're like, Oh, what does this card does? Oh, explanation of the cards. Four of them are explained. The rest are like, I guess that you're just supposed to know that. The other thing, which is very nice, uh, for many people, it's going to love this thing that they have in the game, and they have a teaching guide. So this is like a double-sided thing. Most things are double-sided, especially papers, but this has words on both sides, which is a helpful, like an aid for you to teach the game when you are teaching a game. I tried to use this, and it made sense to, to teach it. Not the way I would normally teach games, but that's just because people are different. Mm -hmm. But a great addition to the game as well. The game also has something that we like, which is... Player aids! And it's a great player aid. It has all the symbols that you need to get, and yes. some final scorings, and what you can do on your turn, which I really enjoy. Yes, we also played the game. Yeah, we have. With two and four people. How long did it take? It took us about one hour with two players. One hour with two. And one and a half hour with four. Which Three is hours with four. Like the, what the box says. Yes. The, the, the four player game was the first one we played. After that, we have only gotten to play two players. Yes. So that felt because spoiler well, alert, we didn't. I didn't like the game the first time I played it. Nah. Uh, so uh, four reasons we're going to talk about soon. Uh, most of them were like what we thought the game was mm -hmm. going to be, and then it was something different. And uh, maybe we like it now. You will find out. Stay close and look. Don't close the window, <laughs> and you will find out. What we another way to find out just skip to the final thoughts, yeah, but that's not you can do be that. But that's not fun for us. Fun. Let's talk about the game. We have to be here. We can't skip to the final thoughts. <laughs> we, well, could. we could. It would be a weird video. We just go like final thoughts time, and it yeah. would be a very different video. Put an ad in like here, and then just jump to that. But the game also has gameplay. It does, and yeah. it's it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, like there's none. I don't feel like there's any revolutionizing things here. Like it's a great. It's a smorgasbord of different mechanisms. Yeah. So we're gonna like and, see if, yeah. if it. There's nothing here. I feel like is like it feels kind of different. It feels okay. It feels. It reminds me of. I don't know why, but it feels like the different areas where you place them are kind of like very by themselves. Mm -hmm. Like nothing. Even though things go together. Yeah, you need the things you get in one area to pay for another thing in the other area, yes. for example. And it says like, okay, I'm gonna go there, get two things, and I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna buy for two things, I get one thing, I'm gonna place the thing over here, and I get the thing bonus for getting the thing, and then the thing go over here, and I get another thing. Yeah. That's exactly That's it. Per perfectly explained. That's like if you go for like the, the rule book where you have like all the You don't the, need any more symbols. content on this game now. All the symbols are like thing, 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 thing. thing, thing. thing. <laughs> okay. But the game is a worker placement game. Yes. Or a B placement game. Yeah. Uh, and the worker placement part, like two things I want to talk about. Yeah. First one is the... The fact that like the better workers are better, like mm -hmm. the leveled up workers are better. Yes. And then we're going to talk about the fact that you never block anything, mm -hmm. uh, which it's, instead it is a worker bumping game. Yeah. Let's first talk about the levels, uh, like how they level up. Did you find that system enjoyable? Yes, I did. It feels to me a little 
like leveling up your workers in Teotihuacan. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work in the same way, but the better the workers are, yep. the more powerful they are. But then you know you have to get new ones soon because mm -hmm. they are going to die, hibernate. hibernate. Uh, so that felt a little um, familiar, but mm -hmm. I thought it was a nice take on it. And it also makes the timing very interesting where you place stuff mm -hmm. because you actually like level up your worker when you are bumped like when your worker when gets bumped. Yeah, go, you know, goes Bumped. back. Um, <laughs> the other thing, bumpity, bumpity bump. The other thing that I really think is enjoyable by that is the timing of other people doing actions. Yes. Because some of the actions gets better, like you add, like there's two spaces for these bees, I'm gonna call them bees. Yeah. Uh, and you add them together and they are gonna then become the the number for the action yeah so if somebody goes somewhere with a high number i might just be like oh i didn't really want to do that action now but now i'm sure i will be able to do that part of the action that i wanted to do the other part which is the thing that kind of threw me off the first time because this game on your turn you either place a worker or you retrieve workers and because of that and i think we we had like the same feelings towards this when we we read the rules and i've taught you the rules that it was going to feel like either Sulkin mm -hmm. or I think like, um, what is it called again? The um, Manhattan Project Energy Empire yeah. and, and other games like this where you have like rounds where you place and rounds where you take in. And, and you're trying to like maximize that in, in the best possible way. But because of this other mechanism that felt kind of weird the first time. Because in this game you bump people. Yes, and that means that you don't have to take the like retrieve action as much mm -hmm. because you're automatically as as usually uh, getting bumped so how so does you, the you bumping have a lot of you have uh, you you place in the space mm -hmm. and sometimes if it's a like double action then yep. You, the the B gets like bumped to the next space, mm -hmm. and then the next round, if somebody else goes there as well, you can also bump yourself, and then you get it back, and then you, you can go bump yourself. You can, <laughs> and then you can either like like have it in the the, the one area. <laughs> Please help me out. I was trying to like send know. a word to you, but yes, uh, maybe but I, I don't should know just what it's called. Uh, yeah, no, you are. You have like the. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. No, but you have like a place where it's a landing zone where they. I think it's a landing zone. Yeah, that's the where name. Where you 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 can't use them, but then you can like reset them later. But if you put them, you can also then choose to put them right back in your active zone, and then they will level up. Yeah. Is that a, that what what the explanation that you were after? Yes, that's okay, that. Good. And now we can talk about that that mechanism. Okay, cool. Because it Go. kind of threw, oh, I was yes. thinking, but you wanted to talk about it, but it kind of threw me off the first time we played. Yes. Because I felt like you were never resetting because you always got your stuff back. Yeah, and which you I to said in up. the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and but but let's talk about. And does it work now after that you played it? Oh, yeah, times? yeah, absolutely. Because you have to think about the resetting, like uh, retrieving action a little differently than different I thing. thought it yes. would be. I thought it would, I was be going to be playing Tolkien, for example, mm -hmm. that I have to retrieve my workers quite a bit. But then uh, you actually could do like a you're not retrieving anything strategy. Yes. I don't know how viable that is. It's going to be viable. Or, or you can do like I'm retrieving a lot. Uh, what do you call it? Strategy. Yes, strategy. Because, because some, the thing about retrieving, in in addition to getting all your workers available again, and bumping them, and bumping them, leveling them up, uh, then you will actually get to activate some farms, mm -hmm. and those can give you points. It can give you up on another the track. Queen's favorite the queen's track, favorite which track, has points or resources, for <clears throat> example. Yeah. So basically, what I understood from the second game on is that that part of the game is something you can ignore. It's yeah. something that you can, like, sometimes, probably, depending on the player count, depending on how players play, because this is also yes. going to change what you do, because I'm going to see that, oh, I really want to go there, but that, you have a three there, so if I bump you, then you get a four available without resetting, mm -hmm. so maybe I want to force you, because I see you have no other now, let's say, in a two-player game, mm -hmm. I see you don't have anyone left, so maybe I want to go somewhere where... Uh, there's nobody to bump out or bump myself so that you have to do a retrieve action instead of getting that kind of retrieve for free uh, and that is what makes that mechanism uh, very interesting to me yes and i really love the fact that you can the last time we played i went for a super heavy retrieval and retrieval strategy where i want to go to the max of the queen's favorite track which gives you 25 points mm -hmm. and just get points 
from the like getting the farm ties against your points and and the queen favor and just like reset as much as possible throughout the mm -hmm. game so i feel like that part of the game oh i'm selling it now but basically i really like it after i played yeah. it more than once yeah absolutely and the actions in themselves are very simple yes i, I love that there are basically i think six worker like spaces you can oh. put it i don't remember how much mm -hmm. i think there are six <laughs> you're counting now i think it's, it's five or six Six, one, yes. two, one, yeah, two, three, six. four, five, six. Yeah. Yes, um, but uh, if you have a four, four mm -hmm. level B, you get Ooh. to do like a super duper action, which yes. is like points or a special ability, mm -hmm. and s sometimes that you need that four for more specific places. The four so for more. Yeah, it's so hard to be like, oh, I really want that scoring tile, mm -hmm. but I also want to go over there and explore with my four, <laughs> uh, so so I can I can do the the stuff that I already mm -hmm. get points for. Which I thought was really cool. Yeah, I really like all in all the worker placement with the retrieval, with the bumping. I really love that part of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about another thing, which is, this is a game that obviously gonna have like many BGG posts about this is unbalanced, this is OP, this is unbalanced, people being angry for nothing. Because this is a game, it feels like so far, I haven't played it 200 times. But I guess the developers have. And what I feel like, and that's pretty cool, is that everything is OP. This is yeah. one of those games, like, it's kind of when you play Marco Polo. Mm -hmm. All of the special powers you get, like, that is crazy powerful. But I look at mine, I'm like, oh, that's also crazy powerful. And that's the, the, the thing here as well. It's all about, like, finding the combos that works with the... And the, the factions that you have, and and then exploiting that combos basically yes. to to try to optimize your points. The last time we played, I looked at your ability. I was like, that is crazy. Yeah, that is that is completely crazy. And then you won. No, I didn't. Oh. But uh, Sorry. I was I was close. <laughs> <laughs> I did not win because I usually don't. Every single one of these are super cool. Yeah. It's, some of them give you like a special ability in the beginning, and then nothing going on in throughout the game, and some give you. A lot of interesting mechanisms throughout the game or interesting abilities mm -hmm. so i really love those factions do you agree i agree and i also think it's cool the way the game is so tight but also so loose at the mm -hmm. same time because yep. getting resources isn't that hard nope. but you have to have space for the resources yes. and that is quite tight actually because you can't just leave them in space yeah <laughs> uh, well so some of the two like um, what do you call it the advanced i saw you i i hear i heard your wax yes. and honey Han <laughs> hacks and money <laughs> Wax and honey, they are. You have limited space for those, yes. especially, mm -hmm. and you have to like collect so you get like tree honey to get the scoring tile that you want, mm -hmm. or tree wax to get the instant bonus that is really good for you. So that is quite. I love that tightness puzzle of the the storing the actual things that you need. Absolutely, there is a some luck in the game. You have a deck of cards which you can. A draw from depending on which actions you do some strategies go heavy for cards others might not go so heavy for cards and the cards will give you a possibility to score at the end of the game if you get to plant it or you can play as many cards as you want for the special ability or a, a resource i like that because mm -hmm. then if you get something that's horrible both of the ability and the scoring doesn't work for you you at least get a resource out of it and in a card heavy strategy you can basically use cards for resources. Um, but that is kind of like, some of these cards are very, feels very good. Mm -hmm. So I felt, feel like it's gonna be harder, I'm not saying impossible, but harder to win if somebody goes like heavy for cards and get like bonus actions and bonus stuff, and you don't. Do you agree with that thing? I feel like it, when I had a cho choice between two resources mm -hmm. and for example, one or two cards, yeah. I would automatically feel like the cards are more valuable yes. because they are resources in addition to being suddenly, randomly, luckily, a great thing, a great thing that you mm -hmm. can use to your advantage either as a scoring, but those are hard to like utilize many of them. Yes. And so so I don't feel like you can get like super lucky or super nope. unlucky there. And none of them feels like you super could. Super OP. You, yeah, you yeah, could, could, could. But, but like the ability yeah, is what you're usually using them for, I feel like. And sometimes they are really good. But as you said, I love that you can use it as a resource mm -hmm. 
every every time if you but want you could, to. For example, there is like one of the, uh, what do they call again, like I don't remember the thing that gives you points. The how many things that you buy. Yeah. And one of them is like, for example, score three points for each uh, recruit, which is the red tiles. Mm -hmm. And then if you randomly also draw that card from the seed deck, that's going to be a lot of points. Yeah, there are usually I, I less did. points. Yeah, so two, yeah. two for each, but then mm -hmm. I got five for two each. Two for each. And I had like ten of them, so it was kind of very... That is really nice. I didn't win. I'm actually, I might have won that game. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so they are great combos, and it's kind of, it has that luck of the draw. Uh, the thing is, that this game is kind of a race. It is. And that also depends on how the players play, of yes. course. But uh, how fast your bees hibernate mm -hmm. is dictating the end of the game. Yes. So when people... In the beginning, you're starting with these low-level bees. And it, you're hibernating maybe one or two. But then suddenly, three, four, five, six. And you're suddenly like, oh, if one more bee hibernate now, it's over. So it feels really racy towards mm -hmm. the end. It, it feels very loose and cozy. In the beginning and suddenly it's over yeah it's kind of like and you and you know it's it's getting that feeling i love in games when it's kind of like that tense feeling mm -hmm. of oh do i oh do i get a time to do all the things i need to get those resources do that do that do that yes let's talk a bit about the weight yes who's it for and yeah. after that we're going to talk about is it fun and final thoughts but first wait i kind of spoil it but if you jumped here you will now find out what kind of weight does this game have. Yeah, I agree with you. It's a medium game. And I think that if you love making cool combos, yes. this is a nice game for you. I think there's a lot of cool combos to be had. Yes. And I also think if you can... My, you, it's <coughs> not that lucky, but you, you could be lucky with the cards, but I don't mind. But I also think it's a new fun take on worker placement with the bumping of the bees. So let's go to some final thoughts for this game, but before that, if you are still here and you are watching this video and you haven't done so yet, you can help us out in a big way by giving us a victory point. And you can give us a victory point by clicking the subscribe button down there, and you can also click the bell to get notifications every time we post a new video. Yeah, and if you are excited for this game, let us know in the comments. If you're not excited for the game, let us know in the comments. Like it! Do stuff, because that's what YouTube tells us to tell you. So now, let's do some final thoughts. Do you want to begin? Yes. I enjoy this game. Um, I was underwhelmed the first time I played yes. it, but it was like I was wholeheartedly because of my expectations. Mm -hmm. So I'm so glad when I got into it a second and third and fourth time that it really clicked with me because then I knew what I was expecting mm -hmm. and then I could see the game for what it is yeah. instead of comparing it to some other game experience that I. Yeah thought I was getting. Yes. Uh, I don't know why my brain does that sometimes, but I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a cozy game. It's just like enough to make me care about it. But usually I have a good plan for my turn. I know what yes. I'm going to do maybe the three, four, like two, three, four turns ahead, but uh, you do something and then I will change my plan, for example. So I love the weight of it. I love the mechanism of it. I love the combos you can get from it. And it's just like, it's a fun game. I'm going to place it at 7.5. Okay, cool. Epiary, uh, as you said, basically, as always, I kind of agree with most of what you're saying. I really am happy that I got an another try and played it more uh, because it's a great game. I think that if you like these kind of combos, feeling great of doing, oh, and now I get to do this super cool combo, but also somebody's going to go and take the tile that you really wanted, and you're going to feel like, Arr! but then you, you get the timing right, you get the combo, you get stuff going on. That feels amazing, and it feels really good in this game as well. I, I think it's a very, I'm pretty sure this is the first design of, of Connie, uh, which is really nice. I oh, really, nice. really en enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to see more designs from them in the future. It is a game that I, for now, really want to keep because mm -hmm. it it's giving giving me good feelings. It's not a super heavy game. It's a, a medium style game, but it has those very quick turns, very fun. I would love to play it with three players again. Maybe not four. Four might be too much to play with five. As mm -hmm. always, I'm not sure if I want to play with that. Uh, but super duper cool game. Love the touch on my own work replacement. Love the combos, all the different factions. Love the fact that it's a fun game about bees in space. I'm going to give it an 8. Cool. And that's going to be the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. And I'm going to Google if bees hibernate. I'm Cinema. <laughs> You've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings and bye bye.